Hello there. I'm Kurt Steinbrook, pastor of Faith Lutheran Church in Wesley Chapel, Florida. And we are going through the book of Romans here in this series. And I'm glad that you've joined us for this video. Today, we're going to be looking at Romans 11.32 and uh, exploring what it says with that. If you've missed our previous videos, because we've been going through the entire book of Romans, you can catch those on Faith Lutheran Church Wesley Chapel's YouTube channel, or you can go to our website, which is faithwesleychapel.com, and then you can catch all the, the videos from the series on our blog. Um, you can also find other series and devotions and other things like that. And of course, if you're in the Wesley Chapel area, we'd love to have you come by sometime. We have worship at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. All right, so before we get into today's video, to the, the content really here, let's take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be here with us. Lord, we know that you are a God that comes near to us, and you have given us your word, your word to be near to us in our hearts and our mouths. Lord, we pray as we read through your word today that you would open our hearts and minds to understand it, to believe it, and receive it, that through it we would be renewed and transformed to be more like Christ. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So let's read our passage here today. I will share it with you. There you go. Romans eleven thirty two, For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. So as we've been dealing with this whole section of Romans, Romans 9 through 11, it that whole section, those three chapters, is seeking to answer the question of why is Israel rejecting Jesus and what's going to happen to Israel? And we've seen that the reason is because they've been resisting the Holy Spirit. They have sought to gain righteousness through their works rather than uh, through faith. In fact, faith was a stumbling block for them. And so they have resisted and they have rejected, even though God, he sent out his word, his word is effective but they resisted it. And so because of that, they're being cut off from Israel. However, God's word is still there. The gospel is still there for all to hear. And so if they uh, turn and receive uh, faith in Christ, then they will be grafted back in. So it's, it's very much just like everyone else, that they're sinners, we're sinners, uh, those who are Gentiles are sinners, and all can be redeemed through faith in Jesus Christ. And so when we get here and it's dealing with, it says all, it's talking about actual all, like all Jews and Gentiles, all people entirely, regardless of their ethnicity. So um, this is, this concluding statement is dealing with everyone, because not only has uh, 11 through 9 dealt with the question about uh, Israel, it also has talked about how the Gentiles are being grafted in. The Gentiles are being brought in to the true Israel, the Israel of faith. And so now when it speaks of all, it speaks of everybody. And the focus of this verse is what? The focus of this verse is God, which is really what all of 9 through 11 has been. And part of the confusion that comes uh, to, to people as they read chapters 9 through 11 in particular is trying to bring the focus around to us, that we like to read these things and think about, well, what is this, not just what does this mean to me, but what does this have to do with me? And we we tend to kind of focus in on ourselves rather than on whatever it may be talking about. In this case, the focus really has been God and what God is doing rather than on ourselves. And so that has caused some, some confusion in the church about what's going on here. Uh, but here we see again, as it's coming to a close, the focus is entirely on God. Now, what does it say? It says, for God has consigned all to disobedience. What does that mean? God has consigned all to disobedience. Well, disobedience here is uh, disobedience to the gospel. In other words, to not hear the gospel in faith, to not believe. And so God has consigned all to not hear or to be disobedient. Actually, it's it, it can also be disobedience to, to the laws at the same time, 
right? So it's it's you're being disobedient to the laws, but you're also being disobedient to the gospel and to not receiving that in faith. Now, as we've, you know, the question would be then, well, if God is consigning it, is that something where we have no no effect in this? We have n- nothing to do with this or, or do we? And what we have seen throughout Romans, uh, especially in this uh, 11 through, or 9 through 11, is that God hardens, but he hardens in response to what people do. And so at this point, you know, mankind has rejected God. Mankind uh, was unpersuaded by creation. You know, talked about how we can see that there is a God as we look at creation. Mankind has been generally unpersuaded by that. Uh, The law written on man's heart, our conscience, you know, that also points us to God. And yet, disbelief. You know, then there's the revealed law. There's the revealed promises. There's Israel itself, which was to be a light to the Gentiles. Uh, And now we have Jesus and the gospel. And even with all these things, man is rejecting and rejecting and rejecting. It's unpersuaded. And so God is consigning them to that. God is giving them over to that rejection. It's a reaction to what people are doing. As God reaches out with his word and with his mercy, and man pushes back and says, no, God consigns all to disobedience, to disbelief. Now, it gives us a little more insight into this if we look at Galatians. So let me bring this up here real quick. Uh, Galatians, which was also written by Paul, uh, but written to a different group of people. And so in Galatians, uh, the big issue that's going on is that uh, the Galatians had heard the gospel. They had heard they're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. They had received it in faith. And then some people had come along who said, no, 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 no. It's not just faith. It's faith and works. And uh, this group, uh, which was called the Judaizers. Uh, They were uh, people who were from Israel who were saying, no, 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 you still got to keep all the laws and you got to be circumcised and you got to do all these things, uh, but you also then have to have faith in Jesus. So they were bringing all the works back in. And so Galatians is dealing with that and saying, no, 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 no. it's never been works. It's always been faith. And it it gives multiple, multiple uh, arguments of why that is the case from scripture so it's going to deal specifically with sin but or with uh, the law but this really goes to all those things that we just talked about with the uh the conscience creation the law the revealed promises all of these things that uh that we that people resist when they don't believe so what does it say it says but the scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. I say, you see how this is a very similar thing. It's just a different angle of looking at it. The scripture, so God's word, is imprisoning everything under sin. So what is it, what's doing the, like, where's the imprisonment? Where's the prison? It's sin. And so scripture comes along and says, look, this is what you're doing. It's showing us our sin. It's showing us that we can't uh, get to God by our own works. And we're left in that situation. If we're just looking at at the law, we're left in that situation where we have uh, we're we're condemned. We're condemned by the law. Now, all have sinned, and so we're all guilty. So we all stand condemned under the, under the law. But as it says, I can use on so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. So here we have that. Uh, grace side that's coming in, the mercy of God that's coming in and saying, but even though you are consigned uh, to disobedience, you can now be released from that. You can be, uh, you can what, receive the mercy of God and be saved. Um, and it comes through God's, God's grace. So previously, Romans had told us that man uh, had exchanged the image of God for creation. God gave man into their sinful desire. That's the consigning. Later, it tells us that man is enslaved to sin, just like it's talking about here in Galatians. Um, And as such, they're consigned to disbelief, to unbelief, and to disobedience. All right. But, of 
course, it continues on that he might have mercy or that he may have mercy on all. Now, because we are all guilty, let me bring you back here. We're all guilty. The only way that we're going to be saved is through God's mercy. See, And so he has recognized the sin and the rejection of mankind and said, this leaves you condemned. But let me show you mercy. I'm going to show you mercy through Jesus Christ for all who believe. And he just puts it out there. It's a gift that is received by faith. Now, does this, when it says all here, that all uh, he may have mercy on all, does that mean that uh, all are going to be saved? Does this teach universalism? Well, it doesn't. It doesn't teach universalism because we need to, to see this in light of all of Scripture, right? And this shows us what, what God's will is. That God's will is for all people to be saved. God's will is to show mercy to all people. But as we have seen repeatedly earlier in Romans, man can resist God's mercy. Man can resist God's calling. And so people... Uh, all people are consigned to disobedience and unbelief. It sets them in a position where God can have mercy on all of them. But not all will experience that mercy because some refuse it. Some resist God and his mercy. So we're all locked up in the prison of sin, right? We're enslaved to sin. And it's God's desire to show mercy on all, regardless of ethnicity, of skin color, of caste, of economic station or political position or any other distinction that we may come up with, uh, you know, just looking around at the world. None of that matters. We're talking about all, every single person. We are all exactly the same when it comes to being sinful, when it comes to uh, God offering his mercy to us. God's mercy is for all, which means God's mercy is for you, and God's mercy is for your neighbor, and God's mercy is received for your family, or it's it's available to your family. And so, how is it received? It's received through faith in Jesus Christ. And so I encourage you, if you haven't already, to hear that word, that Jesus has, is the savior of all, that he came and died for you, rose again to take your sin and to make you righteous, to reconcile you with God, to make you right with God. And you receive that by faith. Believe it. All right, that's it for today. God bless. Uh, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.